Ah, good morning, guys. This is the little bridge that shows you there actually you are living Tui. And this is the beginning of the first day. I wanted to start early, but according to some, especially German standards, 7.38, I'm not an early pilgrim. You start whatever time you want to start. People start from 6, 5.30, I don't know why. Um, but for me, starting is something really personal. And today we're going to talk about these few different things of how to find the way, what is the perfect distance, what would be the pace, and what are the expectations towards the first day as well as the whole Camino. First thing first, where to go? The directions are simply indicated by the arrows and the shells. And if you lose the way, come back to the last moment, you've seen the arrow. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? I'm just walking here. I'm just walking here and and actually I could hear something. Can you hear it as well? Oh. After 40 minutes of walking, we have to ask ourselves the questions. One question, how far should I walk today? Uh, Camino Portuguese is not a really demanding Camino, comparing, for example, to the French one, or to the Norte, or to Primitivo. So it's fairly easy. So you don't have to worry about climbing and climbing the mountains. Thanks God. So you can easily do from 15 to 20 kilometers a day. Terrain. You can find all sorts of terrain from the asphalt that you actually see behind till actually walking in the sandy beaches. And the raw weather, I have nothing to add. Just look around. The distance that you can actually walk a day would depend on how do you feel. Can be that you feel like 20 kilometers. Can, you, can be that you, you found a really good partner where you just walk in, talking, and suddenly you realize and you're already in Santiago. Could be. Uh, it could be that you don't feel like walking. Could be there's no coffee around, or could be that you don't feel good at all. Take it easy, do as much as you want, use a pace that is comfortable for you, don't force yourself, it's a long walk guys. If you get blisters on the first day, the Camino is over. So, and these were the other pilgrims who walk in, going with the bus to Santiago. Hello other pilgrims, go with the bus to Santiago. Okay.
Another of those beautiful days here, and actually I want to tell you a fun fact about Galician culture, because we are approaching something which is called Cruzeiro. And Cruzeiros are those things here, which are like crosses in the middle of the streets. And the story of Cruzeiro is that these are basic, basic instruments of help when the Santa Campania comes to grab you. And you ask yourself, what is the Santa Campania? And Santa Campania are the souls, according to the Galician mythology, the souls of people, they're not dead and they're not in hell. They're just in between when they walk through the night in Galician forest and they try to catch you. So if you see those hordes of people walking and singing, you go, you grab the cruzeiro, you hug it around, and, <laughs> and you say it. So this is one of the reasons as well not to walk at Galician forest at night, according to mythology. Fun fact for the first day of Camino de Santiago. So this is one of those moments when you have to decide which way to go. To go the easy way or to the more long way. Sometimes the long way can pay off and sometimes the easy can pay off. What would you decide? What would be your decision? For me, at the moment, I'm gonna have a little break for the banana and just to breathe and contemplate the nature. And then let's make it cool decision hey you ship <laughs> what i agree with you huh tell me what how many ships you count before you go to sleep <laughs> honestly okay guys i'm gonna go eh you take care bye bye yeah yeah Bye bye. One of the really important things of Camino de Santiago is this thing, which is called the credential. The credential is actually a piece of paper that's all you put, all your stamps. Whatever you pass, you put the stamp as, as a memory and as well as a confirmation that you've been in this or that place. The credentials you can get in albergues, you can get in the churches, you can order them online, but they are actually really useful when you travel. We go to the midday. We got to Oporino, which is 17 kilometers from Tui. And normally it would seem like a good moment to stop, but it doesn't. It's 12 o'clock, the, uh, the wheel is there, the strength is there. So why not to walk a bit more? That's why uh, together with a few other people that we met here, decided to walk a bit more. And this is the thing of, how long and how far should you walk it all depends it all depends of how do you feel the weather and the conditions let's see where we're gonna get today because I do not book my accommodation as the all pilgrims rule which we're gonna talk in tomorrow's episode we're gonna talk about accommodation food and water the basic needs of survival for every human being tomorrow so subscribe to the channel if you're still not subscribed and if you uh, want to comment down below 
what is the subject that really is important for you just put it down in the comment give a like to this video it always helps a lot to grow the community to spread the Cavino vibes everywhere Expectations, expectations. <gasps> they everywhere. They surround. How am I gonna do the Camino? What am I gonna do in Camino? <sighs> That's so tiring. The expectations can be tiring even more than the Camino itself. Should I do how much, this much? Should I? I don't know. You know what? <sighs> Leave expectations at home. And this would be one of the greatest, greatest advices I can give you. Let the Camino reveal unfold in front of you without any expectations, without planning, without hoping, because the lesson you're gonna get might be even greater than you think. Ah, that's the end of today. Mosh.